Real Hauntings and Scary Ghost Stories Spooky tales of hauntings and scary ghost stories have been told since ancient times. Welcome back to Unsolved Ghost Stories. In today's video, we'll feature chilling real-life accounts of paranormal encounters and hauntings. It is not for the faint of heart, so turn back now if you are in doubt. This collection of ghost stories are true paranormal encounters experienced by real people, and here are their stories. Number 13. I was lying in bed watching videos on the internet when I heard what I thought was a knock at the door. Taking out my headphones, I listened for a second knock. Nothing. So I put them back in and kept watching. At exactly 6 minutes and 66 seconds, my video started buffering. My foot was hanging off the bed and I felt someone tugging at it. In a hurry, I looked under my bed and around my room to see if my sister had a trick up her sleeve, but I was alone. I ran and then my heart pounded when I saw a tall, dark figure standing at the end of the hallway. Scared, I closed my eyes and when I opened them again, it was gone. Number 12. One night when I was in seventh grade, I had two friends over and we were in my basement. My brother, who was around 7 at the time, had a toy Furby, but he quickly grew tired of it and it sat in the basement closet ever since. When Furbies are moved, they sometimes start talking, yet they only speak gibberish, not English. It was 4 a.m., all the lights were off and it was silent. As we were getting ready for bed, we heard Furby's voice inviting us to play, and then it laughed. At the time, I didn't know it could not speak English, consequently, we dismissed it and went to bed. To my horror, in the morning when I checked on it, not only did it not speak English, it also had no batteries. Number 11. I was a freshman in college in the Philippines. After watching a play at one of the campus theaters, my friends and I were on our way home late at night. As we approached the College of Education building, I saw a woman jump from the highest floor. I told my friends and we rushed over to the front lawn to help the woman. But when we got there, she was not there. I was being so loud that the guard rushed towards us. Because I was the only one looking up, my friends didn't notice her. I was nearly hysterical, but the guard helped me calm down. After that, he explained that I must have seen the ghost of a woman who had jumped from that building years ago. It was the anniversary of her death. Number 10. My daughter had just turned three when I was at home alone about four years ago. At the time, my husband was working late. I knew I had to set the bedtime. When I was at home alone, it always felt as if someone was watching us. My mother was superstitious. I went through our routine with my daughter. When I put her in her pajamas, she told me that her friend would stay with her and we put her to bed. I asked her who her friend was. Then she looked at me and said, Mommy, can't you see him? He's standing right behind you in my closet and he's very big. How can you miss him? We moved less than a year later. Number 9. One summer night, my mom told me to go to bed early when I was around 8 or 9 years old. So I threw a fit and began screaming at my mom. As a child, my mother always told me not to go to bed angry, since the devil could possess and steal me. After slamming my bedroom door shut, I turned off the lights and lay down. It was near midnight and I was still angry. Suddenly, I heard someone tapping on the door. Cold chills ran up my arms. After that, Someone called my name. He was calling me by a nickname my mom used for me, but this voice sounded like my brother's, clearly my brother, so I yelled at him to leave. The voice taunted me with the nickname till my mom ran to the door and turned on the lights. She asked why I was yelling. I sat up and noticed she was the only person in my room. I told her my brother came into my room and he started calling my name. She looked pale and told me that my brother was sound asleep in her room. In spite of my window being closed and the AC turned off, there was a chill in my room. I was not alone. To this day, no one in the family understands what happened. The only thing I know is that I will never go to bed angry again. Number 8. In 2015, my family and I went to DC for the 4th of July. As we were visiting DC for the second time, we decided to visit Georgetown on the 4th of July. George Washington's estate in Virginia. It was scorching hot, but I'm a huge history buff. So I was excited about touring the home and knew a lot of George Washington and his state previously. I knew he died in his bedroom in 1799, but that was definitely not what I was thinking when our guide led our group upstairs to see the room. His bedroom was filled with delicate artifacts, 
Therefore, we were not allowed in. We couldn't go inside because of little plastic barriers, but we could stick our heads in and look around. For some reason, I was the only one in the group who decided to take a look. After sticking my head into the room, I was instantly struck by how absolutely freezing it was inside. This puzzled me because there didn't seem to be any air conditioning in the room. Then I looked around to see if there was an AC unit or fan I had missed. There was none. I decided to take my head out of the room, but then I realized that I couldn't move. I was paralyzed from the waist up. Then I panicked and tried to open my mouth to call for help. I opened my mouth, but no sound came out. There was a small piece of furniture, a mirror, and a water basin on the other side of the room, where Washington probably washed his face and shaved in the morning. A pair of eyes stared at me, almost like someone staring at you while you are sleeping. Though I did not see anything or anyone, I felt this huge and intimidating presence walk towards me and stare at me. My heart pounded. I physically could not tell you how much time passed in that moment, but after a while, I finally broke free from my paralysis and almost fell backwards onto my butt. My mom asked me what was wrong, and I told her that I wanted to leave. She didn't believe me when I told her the story later, but it still scares me to this day. Number 7. For him and his first wife, my grandfather built a house. Sadly, she died after falling down the basement stairs. He later met my grandmother, and they had my mother. After my grandfather passed away, my grandmother was left alone in the house. My grandmother's friend had stopped by to see if she would sell the house. Afterwards, he gave her his card. As soon as her hand touched the card, a loud crash could be heard upstairs. To give you an idea, the upstairs is laid out in the shape of a square hallway. Behind the pillar is a bookcase. Its shelves had collapsed, like someone had slammed down on them. There were books in every room upstairs. You can find them behind beds, in closets, and even in rooms across the hall. My grandmother never really believed in ghosts, but this event freaked her out. Number 6. A few years ago, I was deeply involved in amateur ghost hunting. During that time, a friend told me her home was haunted. I jumped at the chance. Our first EVP session was conducted in the bedroom of my friend's grandparents. We asked questions like, do you want us to leave, and what are you going to do if we don't leave? Several people in the group immediately began complaining of headaches and stomach pain. As we moved to conduct another session, we heard noises coming from the kitchen, and the room became drastically hot. As I prayed, I closed my eyes. A member of the group told me my hands were being pulled apart by nothing as I prayed. As soon as I opened my eyes, I became disoriented and my vision blurred. People in the group said they heard something coming from the basement up the stairs. As I got up, I saw a horned shadow creeping up the steps yelled at it and said I was not afraid. Five minutes later, I woke up on the floor. As soon as I arrived at home, I noticed what looked like a handprint on my ankle. It felt extremely painful when I touched it. I went to church and explained the situation. I was anointed with holy water by the priest. It felt as if my skin was on fire. Following the incident, we began having dreams about being threatened by a black-suited man. Number 5. I traveled to the coast of Rhode Island last year to attend my cousin's wedding. It wasn't far from the Lizzie Borden house. When we arrived at the wedding venue, we find an old creepy mansion. I was instantly spooked. I made a few offhand remarks about how this seemed to be a haunted location. Soon, the festivities distracted me and I was no longer thinking about ghosts. Everyone had gathered at the back lawn, where we could see the water, as the wedding was taking place behind the mansion. All afternoon, my cousin and aunts kept me busy getting things for them. Eventually, one of them requested that I grab a hair clip she had left in the dressing room. It was upstairs in the mansion. It was accessible only to wedding party members. I felt spooky as I climbed the red velvet spiral staircase. I felt as if every portage on the walls was watching me. I just grabbed the hair clip and ran. The clip was on a large table. As I got ready to leave the room, I saw my reflection in the mirror on the other side. Running around had messed up my hair, so I stopped to fix it. I saw a figure just over my shoulder standing in the door of the room as I faced the mirror with my back to it. Frozen, I stared at the mirror at the figure of a person dressed in white. Regaining my composure, I turned around and looked at the door. I saw no one. I swear I just saw an old white gentleman. Although I couldn't see his clothes, I knew that no one in the wedding party looked like him since we are an Asian family. A random guest would not have been allowed to go upstairs where I was. As I stood there, confused and mildly scared, the door to the bathroom began shaking and banging, as if someone was locked in there trying to escape. I thought it was just a bridesmaid. The doors creaked and jammed frequently. I went and easily opened the door. 
No one was inside the small bathroom. Scared of my wits, I made a run for it. Despite my fancy dress and six-inch heels, I ran down the red velvet spiral stairs and did not look back until I was outdoors. The bride's hairstylist told me later that night that he, too, saw the same apparition. Number 4. This happened to me more than once in the house where my family lived. A ghost in the house resembled me, I was told. It happened back in 2011 or 2012. I heard my name being called while in my bedroom. While I replied from upstairs, I heard my mother saying, never mind, in a very nervous voice. So naturally, I went down the stairs to find out why my mom was calling. My mom told me that she saw me standing in the kitchen. I told her I had been upstairs the whole night. She replied, I saw you go into the kitchen and open the cupboard. Another incident occurred with a family friend named Jamie. We had an oddly shaped house. In the hallway, there were two openings, so it created a strange open space between the hallway and the kitchen. A TV was reflected in the mirror on the wall so you could see it. On my way to the amusement park, Jamie looked at the mirror in the hallway and asked the other person at the house if I was still there. When I said no, she left. Jamie said she saw me sitting on the couch in the reflection of the TV. However, the TV was not on. The last incident happened with my cousin. The night before, he stayed down in our living room and we both fell asleep there. He awoke and went upstairs to brush his teeth in the bathroom. The wall was covered with one of those huge mirrors. With the bathroom door open, you could see into my room and my brother's room. He said he was brushing his teeth. When he looked in the mirror, he saw me standing in my bedroom, watching him brush his teeth, and said, I didn't realize you were awake, Cass. He couldn't get a response. Again, I was asleep downstairs in the living room. Next thing I knew, my cousin was shaking me, telling me that he had just seen me standing in my bedroom. We lived there for about nine years. I always felt the coldest in my room, particularly that closet. That room was very cold. We were told that it was a portal. In the night, I would hear hangers moving around and feel someone or someone sitting at the edge of my bed. You could always hear footsteps in the basement if you were alone. It never felt threatening to me, but the idea of a ghost looking at me creeped me out. Number 3. Around the age of 9, a friend of mine introduced me to the urban legend of the Bloody Mary. Each of us would summon her in the bathroom one at a time as a game. My daring streak got the best of me one night, so I went to the bathroom and did it. Except, I ran out before I could see anything. Then I went to sleep. Around 4 a.m., I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. It wasn't until later that I realized those footsteps never reached the top, that I realized it couldn't possibly be my parents. Then I thought, oh, the tooth fairy. Remember, I was nine. That night, I looked under my pillow and saw that my tooth was gone. As the steps got louder, faster, and closer, it sounded as if someone had already reached the top of the staircase. So I checked. No one was there, and both my parents were asleep. I got so scared that I pulled the covers over my head. The steps suddenly stopped. Taking a deep breath of relief, I slowly uncovered my face and turned my body towards the wall. A hand crawled down my forearm and hit my arm against the wall with full force. I had no control over my arm, which freaked me out. In the morning, I woke up to find a dent in the wall. Number 2. The house I lived in was built in the early 1900s. Originally, it was intended to be used by the doctor for checkups and working in his home. Nearly every visitor to the house is freaked out by a room in the front. As a child, my friends described a strange feeling when walking past the room. Some even ran past to avoid it. It consists of a long hallway where you have to pass every room before getting to an open area. In 2015, my girlfriend told me that she saw snakes in one corner of the room and a snarling dog in the other. This was all in the middle of the night. I had experienced what I believed to be hallucinations of a child lost and a stranger who I thought was my mother's friend. When I asked her who it was, she replied that no one fitting the description had entered the house. I never felt alone at night when I went for a drink or on the toilet. I felt something was watching me, but it didn't act out. As an adult, walking into that front room still makes me feel cold in a sense of emptiness. To this day, I wonder what kind of patience that original owner had. Did any of them die there? Who knows? Number 1. From Chicago's south side, we had just moved to the suburbs. I felt a little uneasy in a totally new environment, as did my family. My younger brother, however, was a nervous wreck. He refused to go into the basement or even the stairs leading down to them. It was no big deal. He was about 5 or 6 at the time, so we chalked it up to a typical kid who was afraid of the basement rhetoric. But things certainly got weird pretty quickly. Apparently, I started sleepwalking. Before we moved, I never sleptwalk. During the night, I'd stand outside my parents' door. I did this several times a week. I would stand right beside their bed and stare at them. My mother always told me to go back to sleep, 
She even said that I tried to leave the house. I was about 10 or 11. One night at dinner, my brother flipped out, weeping hysterically and pointing at the door leading to the staircase leading to the basement. It's staring at me. That's all he can say when my parents ask what's wrong. Things seem to have really calmed down after that. My birthday is in the middle of winter. As I sat in my room, I heard someone sing happy birthday to me. Weird, since it wasn't my birthday yet. I went into the kitchen expecting to see my parents with a cake. Nobody was there. I thought perhaps I was imagining things. When I returned to my room, I heard it again. Looking around, I found the source of the noise. It was coming from the vents, the vents that all led to the basement. My parents lost hope when they couldn't find my younger brother. We searched everywhere, no sign of him. We were all freaking out. Somewhere in the vents, we could hear someone crying. He was in the basement. Mom wouldn't let me go to the basement with her. She said that when she ran down there, she saw a man-shaped shadow. My mother is your regular religious immigrant parent. She did not allow us to bring in anything connected to death or the supernatural. To her, it would be inviting it into our home. Of course, this freaked her out. No matter what it was, she told it repeatedly to leave her family alone. Ultimately, it vanished. She then found my brother. After that, she hung up a few crosses all over the fence and a Virgin de Guadalupe statue. Nothing strange has happened since, but we still had to move. The moral of the story? Never move to the suburbs. What about you? Do you have any bone-chilling paranormal encounters you'd like to share with us? Tell us in the comment section down below. We hope you enjoyed these chilling real-world accounts of hauntings and paranormal experiences. Stay tuned to Unsolved Ghost Stories for more scary ghost stories and creepy paranormal activities and mysteries. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future videos, if you dare.